Hey everybody. So I was looking at some videos on YouTube and I come across some videos claiming a way that you can test your microwave oven for microwave radiation leakage. And the common practice they tell you to do is to use your cell phone like a smartphone. Place it in the microwave and try to call it. And if your phone is successfully able to get a signal in the microwave, then your microwave is leaking radiation and it's going to hurt you. Okay, I'm exaggerating a little bit. But I do think that some people, when they watch these videos and they put their phone in the microwave and they see that their phone works in the microwave, they're probably freaking out, thinking the microwave is super dangerous and throw it in the trash and will never use it again. Well, I've come to learn that there's some misinformation going around on the internet about certain things. And this sort of, I'm going to say, is a 50-50 mix of that. Because using your cell phone as a test for microwave radiation leakage, it's just not very accurate. Particularly with using it to uh, basically call it and see what happens. Because the thing is, there's so many variable factors at play. For example, your cell phone signal strength. How close are you to a cell phone tower? How well does your phone overall do it pick up a cell phone signal? For example, I got my cell phone here and my home phone here. I'm going to place my cell phone in the microwave. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call my home phone from it. Okay, so I'm currently on the phone right now, and let's see what happens here. I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, cell phone on speaker. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and set this in the microwave. All right, so you can see there's the phone in the microwave. I'm going to close the door. Can you hear me? Alright, let's try something different here. Let's go ahead and set the camera right here in the microwave again. That's actually why I had this tape dispenser in here. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to close the door. Okay. So I'm going to close the door. Okay. As you can hear, I am still on the phone. Well, that time it actually did successfully drop the call. But I did testing off camera, and several times I was able to call myself on the phone. So we're going to try something else here. So, chances are, you probably use your phone on your Wi-Fi at home. And your Wi-Fi operates on a frequency. Now, this depends on whether or not you're using this band. Your Wi-Fi, for example, commonly uses 2.4 gigahertz. Sometimes it can also use 5 gigahertz. But in this case, the phone is actually hooked up to a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi signal. Now, the microwave actually operates on a very similar frequency to that roughly 2450 megahertz now this one does not say that right here on this tag but it does have the model and all that good stuff so it's a relatively new microwave what we're going to do now is I'm going to put the camera back in here I want you to pay attention to the Wi-Fi on this phone and it probably dropped previously but pay attention again all right I like for y'all to pay close attention to the Wi-Fi signal strength here when I close this door and as you can see we just lost our Wi-Fi it's gone So, you 
can see we lost our Wi-Fi signal. However, when we open the door back up, we are reconnected. Okay, so for example, when we look at the door in a microwave oven, you may notice the mesh looking appearance to it. The reason for that mesh is it blocks microwave radiation from escaping from the oven. No, it's not the plastic shield that does that. And it's actually not this glass or plastic on the outside of the door. It is solely the metal grid. The holes are big enough for light to pass through. However, they're small enough or way small enough to where microwave radiation cannot escape. Because the size of a microwave wavelength is roughly 12 centimeters. Hard to believe, but of course we can't actually see that because of course we can't see microwaves. But you can see inside here we have all sorts of these little holes for ventilation and all that good stuff and also for this light. And right here is the waveguide for the magnetron. The magnetron is behind here. So, of course this is inside the microwave cavity. All right, so I got a second microwave that I'm going to demonstrate this on. And you might be interested to see what happens here. Okay, so here we have this much older Hamilton Beach microwave. It's definitely a good bit older than that Samsung microwave we just looked at. I got this for free. Um, neighbor up the street was getting rid of it because, well, inside you can see we got rust in here. And that's not really a good thing. So, Definitely getting toward the end of its lifespan. They done bought a new microwave. I'm not sure how old this unit is, but let's look at the back here. And we might see some information. I don't know. Alright, so if you look right here, you'll see the output 1000 watts, 2450 megahertz. Again, that was, a, that was the frequency we talked about earlier, and it's very close to that of a common Wi-Fi signal. Now, of course, you can have 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi as well, but 2.4 gigahertz is really your best bet, I think. So, for example, if you look here, you may notice something's missing. There's no glass on this microwave door. Yes, I took it out. I took the glass out completely, and also this plastic here, I took, took that off as well. So, there's the glass right there. So literally there's nothing but the mesh on the door. I'm going to set my phone in here. And I'm going to do what I did last time with the Wi-Fi. Okay, so you can see we are connected to Wi-Fi. Right now at least. I'm going to try to set my camera in here. Alright, so I'm going to close the door. Look what happens here. Bye bye Wi Fi. So you can see Wi Fi dropped out. We've opened the door now and let's go ahead and try to reconnect here. Honestly, I would say that. The phone test can be hit or miss. Sometimes it will drop calls, but from my testing, it won't. And matter of fact, here's a video clip of me um, doing the phone call test with this microwave. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and call my cell phone. As you can see, it is ringing. So, I think it's safe to say that uh, the calling the phone trick doesn't exactly work. But, if you have a 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi signal in your house, you can use that to test your microwave. And the reason why I'm uploading this video is 
I'm pretty sure that some people are watching the other videos solely saying, try calling your phone in the microwave. And people are probably freaking out when they see their phone getting a call or working while inside the microwave. So, I figured I'd just go ahead and post this to say, hey, um, don't freak out because, well, the cell phone calling is just not quite a reliable means of testing your microwave. However, Wi-Fi, I'd say that's definitely a go. Again, your Wi-Fi signal is almost the same as what your microwave operates at. And of course, the, the real way to test would be to get the proper um, microwave uh, radiation detector and check around your oven while it's running with a cup of coffee or water or something inside of it. But a lot of us don't have microwave radiation detectors, but we do have cell phones or smartphones. And I think the Wi-Fi is a much better and more reliable means of testing this. So anyways, there is her first video. Hopefully if you watch this, maybe you'll feel a little bit more at ease with your microwave. Do this test with your microwave. Um, do it with the Wi-Fi. And again, I forgot to mention, do not turn your microwave on with your phone and otherwise you'll fry your phone. So, yeah, don't turn the microwave on. And I should note, this microwave is not even plugged in. So the, um, the cage run is not even grounded. Which, by the way, this is called a Faraday cage, in case you're wondering. The Faraday cage keeps the microwave radiation inside the cavity of the microwave while it's in use. And there are several micro switches in there that prevent this unit from running. And I mean actually running the magnetron with the door open. Now, sometimes microwaves can and will run the fan and light if you have the door in just the right spot. Matter of fact, I should note, sometimes it will trip your breaker. And that will happen if one of your other switches is getting faulty. So yeah, your microwave literally will... Um, trip its own fuse or trip your breaker to prevent itself from running the magnetron if this door is not perfectly sealed shut. So, anyways, hope you all enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video from Cuckoo Channel. If this is your first time, please subscribe to the channel and be sure to tick the bell so we get notified of new video posts. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment. And share this video as well as the channel with your friends and get the word out. Also, I have a second channel that's Cube Comp MTDX. Over there, you'll find videos about thunderstorms and weather, cycling, and videos about me personally. Feel free to subscribe over there as well if you like. Again, I really hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for your support.